Prior to World War I, most armies primarily issued long rifles. Many also fielded shorter carbine variations of that same rifle. Imperial Germany was no exception. The Gewehr 88 had its carbine version, the Carabiner 88, and the pinnacle of military bolt action design, the Gewehr 98, had the Car 98 AZ. But that wasn't the first Mauser 98 pattern carbine that Germany fielded. Instead, this was simply named the Car 98. No, not the Car 98 AZ, and not the K98K used during World War II. Simply, the Car 98. This here is very much a work in progress, and is what I'm building in this series of videos. I'm calling the Car 98 the missing link in Mauser evolution, because very little is known about it. I'm fairly certain there's no other videos on YouTube about these specific rifles, and if there is, they're buried under the thousands of Car 98 AZ and K 98K videos. In my research, I was only able to find short sections in a few books two print magazine articles, and online I could only find a few pictures of a handful of rifles. There's also a few different versions of the carbine that were trialed. Unfortunately, I don't have the much rarer books on Mauser evolution like those by Dieter Stortz, so if anyone has more information on these rifles that I've missed, please add a comment down below. But the short version of the Car 98's history is that it was produced in small numbers up until 1905, primarily by the Erfurt Arsenal. In 1905, the S. Patron, or Spitzer ammo, was introduced. When combined with the short 17.3-inch barrel of the carbine, the new round produced excess recoil and muzzle blast. The carbine was completely redesigned, with a longer 23.2-inch barrel, resulting in the Car 98 AZ adopted in 1908, which is actually more of a universal short rifle than a true carbine. But that's enough of the history of the Car 98, because the main focus of this video and this series will be building the rifle. Before I get into that, I want to make a few quick points. I'm going to be referring to this carbine as simply the Car 98 through the series. There's some debate if this is the Car 98A or the Car 98 first model, second model, etc. I'm just going with Car 98 for simplicity. And I'm going to be replicating the last revision of the Car 98, sometimes referred to as the 1905 model. It has a sling slot on the buttstock, a spoon shaped bolt handle, small long of his ear or roller coaster sight, an H shaped middle band, bayonet lug, and a small nose cap. Now that that's out of the way, let's go back a few weeks and see how I got to this point. I found this stripped Gravier 98 action. It's perfect, since the barrel has already been cut down. I do need to clean up the crown, however. Its length measures at just under 18 inches. Maybe a tad long, but better than too short. The rear sight is the standard Longa Vizier. And the action was made in 1916 by Spandau. But I don't just have a stripped action and rear sight. I also have a trigger guard, floor plate, follower, and to complete the magazine, the spring, I have the trigger assembly, the ejector and bolt stop assembly. For the stock, I have the butt plate and screws. And speaking of screws, the action screws as well. I also have a cross bolt for the stock, because the stock I bought didn't include it. This is a stock for an FN model 1950 carbine in 30-06. It was advertised as semi-finished, which it definitely is. More on this in a bit, I'll wrap up the rest of the parts I have on hand. I have a bayonet lug, which is slightly bent. And finally, a front band for a Yugo 1924. Both of these will need to be modified to make the Car 98. 
I am missing a major component though, the bolt, which I've been on the lookout for. Getting back to the stock, the outside surface finish is very rough. It hasn't been smoothed or brought to its final size yet. And the black spots were concerning. I was worried that there would be deep stains, but you can see an area on the butt that I smoothed out to see if they were under the surface. But they weren't, and the stock should clean up well. I did go over it with bleach when I got it, but I think that whatever made these stains is long gone. The reason I chose the stock in particular is that there's no cutouts for a sling loop at the rear. That will need to be cut to match the car 98. And in addition, the rest of the stock will need to be reshaped significantly. Even the butt plate will need to be fit since this stock is cut for a flat butt plate. The actual Car 98 butt plate has a longer top tang, however this is a normal Mauser 98 butt plate, which I'll be using. On the inside, the semi-finished stock is roughly inlet, which is a good head start. However, the action doesn't quite fit it all the way. The barrel fits. The issue is the receiver. You can see how much higher the rear tang is over the wrist. These should be flush. It is a good length though. The front is almost all the way to the muzzle. But the inletting and stock shaping are something that I'll tackle in the future. The condition of the metal parts needs attention first. They're fairly rusty. And though this looks like a pile of parts, I'll need to do a little further disassembly. Now that everything's fully apart, I'll be converting the red rust into bluing. Most of the small parts are in this pot of water, and the pot is on a propane turkey burner. I'll turn on the gas and light the stove. After a few minutes, the water is boiling. For the action, I have this tube. I'll slide it down, tilting the tube so I'm not dropping it straight down. Then add the cap and place the tube on top of the pot. The tube will fill with steam, venting out the holes in the cap. After about 45 minutes, the tube can be removed and the gas shut off. Here's the parts after boiling. The rust on the metal surface has been converted. What I'll do now is remove the rust that's loose. To do that, I have the soft carding wheel. This will remove the loose rust without damaging the finish.
the loose rust has been removed, at least from all the areas that I could reach with the carding wheel. For those other areas, like inside the trigger guard, I'll use 4 aught steel wool by hand. Another area where loose rust may be hiding is inside the bore. I'll do a few passes with a brush. Now that the rust has been taken care of, I'll transfer all the parts to a pot in order to soak them in kerosene. Kerosene will displace any leftover water, as well as clean all the parts. For the action, I have another tube that I'll carefully drop it into and fill with kerosene. I haven't noticed a difference between a short soak and a long soak, so after a half hour or so, I have the parts out and dried. Finally, the last step in the conversion process is to soak the parts in oil. This is non-detergent oil, a clean oil without any additives, that will serve to protect the metal from future rust. I'll cover all the parts. I really should have another tube filled with this oil for dipping the action in, but that's for another day. I left the parts soaking in oil overnight. Here's the results. Some of the parts, like the floor plate and trigger guard, are still slightly brown in color. I'll watch these in case the rust hasn't been fully converted. But for others, they're a deep blue-black, like on the left side of the barrel. That's in contrast to other areas like the receiver that were originally in the white. They've since rusted unevenly, but that rust has been converted. I won't be trying to remove this, because my goal in this project isn't a CAR-98 carbine that's in perfect condition. Nor is it my goal to pass this off as an original, which is why I'll be leaving the markings. This will still read Gewehr 98, and this will still say Spandau 1916. But before I get started using these pieces to create the replica CAR-98, I still need to do a few things. I'll first look down the bore to inspect the rifling. It looks good. There's defined rifling throughout. I'm not sure if the twist rate is correct for a shorter barrel, but there's not much I can do with that. In addition to the bore, I have to do a few things with the other parts. The trigger guard has a small chip right here that's sharp to the touch. I'll give it a few light taps to peen the metal flat. And that's much better. I won't cut myself on this. Now I can reassemble the floor plate release. Since the plunger is recessed, I can't really press it in. I'll use a nut as a spacer and a hammer. Then I can add the pen. Again, due to its awkward location, I can only press so much. I'll need to use the punch to drive it in.
Next up is the ejector box. I'll fit this flat spring. It's very tight. I'll try squeezing it in. And that did it. I'll add the ejector and the screw just to hold it all together. That's all the reassembly that I'll do for now. The rest of the parts I'll need to keep separate to build the carbine. The trigger will need to be off in order to inlet the stock, and the rear sight will need to be heavily modified. In fact, I actually need to take this apart further. I should have done this prior to converting the rust, in case there's any hidden underneath. Not only is the carbine rear sight much shorter, it's also placed further back, just ahead of the receiver. The rear sight base is silver soldered onto the barrel. You can see the seam at the back here. And on the top, the small screw is used for alignment. I'll remove it. I'll be sure not to lose this tiny screw. Like I said, the rest of the sight base is soldered on. I'll use a propane torch to melt the solder. And to drive off the sight base I have this brass rod, which I'll use like this to push the sight base forward without damaging or scratching anything. That's not moving. I'll have to heat it up some more. Now it's off. I noticed a small amount of liquid solder leaking out on the backside, which is when I knew to drive off the sight base. I don't see any rust hidden under here, which is good. However, I do want to get rid of the excess solder. I'll heat it back up and use a damp rag to remove the solder. That's much cleaner. There looks like there could be some solder in this screw hole, but I don't think I'll be reusing it. I also cleaned most of the solder out of the rear sight base off camera. I'm not going to start on modifying this right away, because honestly I don't know what I'm going to do just yet. I need to move it backwards on the barrel, but I can't due to the step up at the chamber. 
I'll need to modify part of the site base to fit over it, since I don't want to modify the barrel in this critical area. I'll also need to modify the rear sight itself, probably moving the pivot point back to around here in order to shorten it. There seems to be two main variations of rear sights on the car 98. The first type, on the left, has graduated from 300 meters and has a very similar adjuster to the one on the Gewehr 98, and the slot for the adjuster goes all the way to the front. The second type on the right is graduated from 200 meters has a longer adjuster, and the slot for it stops halfway. It also may be a bit taller overall. I may need to blend elements from both types to make the sight for my rifle. The deciding factors will be whatever is easier to fabricate, since a 100% correct clone may be impossible. I'm open to suggestions and ideas, but that work will take place in the future. For now, I'm going to end this introductory video. The next part in this series will be focused on the stock, fitting the action, and then maybe shaping the exterior. Look for that video soon. Thanks for watching.